Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a rational equation. We have 3 over x plus 4 over y equals 5, and we're going to be looking for the x and y values. Now, we could also call this a Diophantine equation if we are looking for integer solutions. Those are specific, and Diophantine equations are fun to solve. You can solve, uh, there are many different methods, and I made a video on Diophantine equations, so you can go ahead and check it out. In this video, we're going to be looking at both of the cases, solving for integers and solving for real numbers. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation. First, I would like to make a common denominator. That gives me 3y plus 4x divided by xy, but I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply that. And to be able to use Simon's favorite factoring trick, if you remember that, I'm going to put everything on the same side and kind of write my expression like this. Now, I want to make it factorable by grouping, so I will start by taking out some terms from the first two. And since I have y in both of these, I'd like to take out a y, but that's going to leave me 5x minus 3 inside. Instead of a y, I want to take out 5y. This is not the standard method. Normally, people would just multiply both sides of the equation both sides of this equation by something to make it easier to factor, but I would like to go the fraction route. So I'll take out a 5y, that's going to give me x minus, to get 3y from 5y, we need to multiply by 3 over 5, and that's it. That's what I mean by fraction method. And then minus, here obviously, uh, you can take out uh, a lot of different things, but notice that I have x inside the parentheses, so I'd like to take out a negative 4, that gives me an x, but my expression is incomplete. So in order to get the same thing inside the parentheses, I'm supposed to subtract 3 over 5, but notice that that is equivalent to adding 12 over 5 to both sides. I'm not, I know I'm not showing my work, but I hope this makes sense. In other words, I'm adding 12 over 5 to both sides. That will make this expression factorable. I hope that makes sense. Now, we are ready to factor. We can take out x minus 3 over 5, which is a common factor. The other factor is going to be 5y minus 4. But don't worry, we're going to take care of this. We're going to simplify this. All right. Now, I have a fraction on both sides. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 5. That's going to help. And it's going to give us 5x minus 3 multiplied by 5y minus 4 equals 12. Awesome. You know, Diophantine equations may look complicated to you first, but once you get the strategies and techniques, it'll be a lot easier. So here we, we are very lucky because it's in factored form. So that's great. Not all equations are factorable like this, so we have to use some other arguments. But in this case, it is. So I'm going to be looking at factors of 12. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the positive ones, and I'm pretty sure you can find the negative ones yourself. Well, we can take a look at them as well if you want. So I'm going to list the factors of um, 12. Let's start with 1 and 12. So if this number is equal to 1 and this is equal to 12, what am I getting from here? This gives me 5x minus 3 equals 1, and that means, let's go ahead and do it on the side. This means 5x equals 4, and x equals 4 fifths. Now remember, I'm looking for integer solutions first, so this doesn't give me an integer solution. So, so this case is not good. I might get a value for y, but that's not good enough. And most probably you're not going to get it. And the second pair I'm going to try is going to be 2 and 6. This gives me 5x equals 5 and 5y equals 10. This is nice because this gives me x equals 1 and y equals 2. Awesome. This means 1 comma 2 is a solution. Beautiful. Let's continue doing this and then see if there's any other solutions. I'm going to go with 3 and 4, but 5x minus 3 equals 3 gives me 5x equals 6. x is not going to be an integer. Uh-oh, that's not good. So I'm just going to put an x there, which means we don't get any integers. 4 and 3 is not going to give me any integers either because think about it, 5x minus 3 equals 4, 5x equals 7. Uh-oh, that's not good. So that's an x. How about 6 and 2? Uh-oh, that's not going to work. Notice you can do this mentally, 5x equals 9. That's no good. All right, how about the 12 and 1, which is the last pair for our positives? And that's going to give us 15 and 5. Yay, that's good. This means that x equals 3 and y equals 1. So 3 comma 1 is another solution. 
at the end of the video, like I said earlier, if I don't forget, I'll show you a graph. I, the reason I said that is because yesterday's video, I was supposed to show you a graph, but then I forgot it and I, you know, recorded that video twice and both times I forgot and I'm like, what the heck, I'm just going to share the link with you so you can see the graph. All right, great. So hopefully I won't forget this time. Now, those are the solutions that come from positive. Let's go ahead and test out the negatives. Uh, what happens if I set this equal to negative 1 and negative 12? Okay, this gives me 5x equals 2. So we can quickly do this like just by testing the x. And if x gives us something nice, hopefully y is going to give us something nice too. Uh, it doesn't give me anything because 5x equals 2 is no good. How about negative 2 and negative 6? 5x equals 1, that's no good. How about negative 3 and negative 4? 5x equals 0, that means x is what did I say zero? Okay, I'm ahead of myself. 5x minus 3 equals negative 3 means 5, x is 0. So 0 comma 0 is going to work. And let's go back to our equation though. Like, uh-oh, that's not good because 0 is going to make it undefined. See, you ha always have to go back to the original equation and check your work because this is no longer rational. Okay, negative 4 and negative 3. Let's test those values out. If 5x minus 3 is negative 4, 5x equals negative 1, that's no good. So this is an x, this is an x, all these are x's. And then, um, what do I have next? Negative 6 and negative 2, that means 5x is equal to negative 3, that's no good. What about negative uh, 12 and negative 1? That means 5x is equal to negative 9, that's not good either. So we don't have any other integer solutions. The only ones are 1, 2 and 3, 1. But these are all about the integers. Let's go ahead and talk about the equation. Uh, what about uh, solving for reals? Right? What if I just want to solve for reals? Okay, let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to write my equation is 3 over x plus 4 over y equals 5. And I would like to isolate the y here. Don't ask why. Because I'm solving for y. Well, I see. I answered the question. Uh, let's make a common denominator. And crisscross applesauce, uh, cross multiply. 4x equals y times the quantity. Do not distribute because I would like to solve for y. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by whatever is uh, needed. So y is going to be 4x over 5x minus 3. Now, couldn't we solve this equation uh, by putting it in this form and then trying to break down the 4x so that we can write it? Yes, you could do that, but it's going to be a little painful. I think this method is a little easier in my opinion, but you could um, argue that. Anyways, this is my expression y in terms of x, which is kind of cool because this kind of gives us solutions. So if I wanted to write the solution set, I could safely say that, okay, x comma y, the solution set is composed of x comma y's such that y equals 4x minus 5x minus 3. Or one can write it uh, using a parameter like t, suppose x equals t, then the solutions are going to be ordered pay as t comma 4t over 5t minus 3. And as you can see here, t equals 3 over 5, is not allowed because that's going to make our expression undefined. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Yeah, I didn't forget this time and see what it means from a graphical perspective. So here's the graph of y equals 4x over 5x minus 3. This is a rational function. As you can see, the graph is kind of like a, what is that called? Is this a, is this a hyperbola? Probably something like that, right? But it's kind of rotated, right? Yes, it is rotated. Uh, so it's curvy. And as you can see, I included one of the solutions here, 3, 1. These are called lattice points, which means both co uh, coordinates are integers. And you know, there is another one, uh, and that was, I think, 1, 2, right? And as you can see, 1, 2 just appears right here. So we only have two integer pairs that are solutions. The rest are non-integers. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.